Okay, welcome everyone. In this tutorial, we will cover everything you need to know about exceptions. First, let me show you what a lot of teachers don't, and that is why we need exceptions. Let's say we run this program, which will divide two numbers. It's nothing hard, so you enter a first number, you enter a second number, and it returns 5 divided by 1 is 5, which is correct. And what happens if the user enters 0 in the second place? We get an exception and your program crashes. And it doesn't matter here because our program is very simple. But if you have a large program with a lot of lines of code or maybe a graphical user interface, you wouldn't want the user to crash the application because he entered 0. And in that case, we use exceptions or the program throws an exception which we can then catch so now that you know why do we need exceptions let's get started in here you can see the hierarchical structure of exceptions and errors usually when we say exceptions we also mean errors but as you can see here there are two different classes so they all start from object then they all become throwable and then we extend to error and exception. All exceptions and all errors must extend throwable class so we can catch them as I will show you later. Here you can see some types of exceptions like input output exception, file not found exceptions and you can see some errors like out of memory error, stack overflow error and so on. So just know that exception and error are actually two different classes, but they act very similar. And I will show you how to catch errors and how to catch exceptions. You've probably heard that there are two types of exceptions, unchecked and checked. And there's a really simple logic behind that. So unchecked exceptions are, are all errors and all runtime exceptions. And all other exceptions are checked. And what does it mean to be unchecked and checked? Well, if you look here, I've created an array that has five elements and I want to print out the tenth element. And of course, we will get an exception, array index out of bounds. This is unchecked exception because as you, as you can see, we don't get any red marks under this code because the program at start doesn't care that we want to print out the 10th element. IntelliJ IDEA tells me that I will get array index out of bounds, but the Java program doesn't care. But when I try to create a scanner on my file object, so I can read the file, as you can see, I get an error, unhandled exception, Java file not found exception. And I can add a fix here, and if I click it, we we'll get that in here, this method throws file not found exception. And I will explain this syntax later. But as you can see, the red markings are gone because now we're handling the exception and we can start the program. So unchecked exceptions are not checked at compile time and checked exceptions are. So our program is forcing us to actually deal with checked exceptions and doesn't care about unchecked exceptions. As you can see, if I run the program, I will get Java file not find exception because I have to, as you can see, must be caught or declared to be thrown. I will not even get to this part because he already notices this part. And if I remove this part, I can run the program. As you will see, we are running the program and now I will get an error. And in the previous case, we can't even run the program. So that's the difference between checked and unchecked exceptions. And now I will explain the syntax. Let's take a look at this example. So we have an array and we want to print out the fifth element. And as you've seen before, it will get it will throw an error. So the way we catch that error is like this. You write a try statement. And as the name suggests, the program tries to run this piece of code. If it succeeds, it goes to finally, and then 
finishes the program or goes on with the program. If it doesn't succeed and it catches an error or an exception that we have provided here, we can do whatever we want. So in this case, I tried to print this message. And then again, it goes to finally. So he starts with try. If it succeeds, it goes to finally. As you can see, I get called no matter what. So whatever happens, finally is always executed. And if we catch an error, but the error needs to be this one, which we stated here, it will do this piece of code and then this piece of code. So let's take, let's run the program. And as you can see, we'll get an error here. So we tried to print out the fifth element, but actually the sixth element, because we start counting from zero. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, and we tried to do five and we caught the error. It says array index out of bound exception. And then in here, we printed that message because we already said that an exception is an object. You can see that there are a lot of methods which you can call. I could have also uh, do something else like get cause, get localized message, but I just printed out the normal simple message. And then this piece of code got executed. And if I change this to zero and run the program, you will see that we got the zero element and then finally got called again. So this is a simple syntax. You can also catch more errors. You can say maybe catch stack overflow error and give it a name and then catch that as well. But that will not happen now. So, but maybe you want to say get cause E1 get cost something like this so you can write hundreds of those and it will go line by line something like if else block and now i will explain the throws keyword as you can see i have a program that um, creates a file object and then i create a scanner that will read that file object as you can see i have used the try catch block which you just learned uh, in the previous section and I tried to catch a file not found exception. So if I run the program, everything will work. We will catch the exception because this file does not exist. And as you can see, we'll print do nothing. But if I remove this try catch block, you'll see that I get a red circle in here, red underline in here that says unhandled exception because Java forces us to handle checked exceptions. And the way, if you do not want to write try catch blocks, you can just say, okay, my method throws file not found exception. And you will just suppress the warning. It doesn't mean, let's run the program. It doesn't mean that we catch the error. It just means that our method throws, as you can see here, we got an exception, file not found exception because this keyword doesn't handle the exception, it just suppresses the warning. This can be confusing to a lot of people, but the only way to catch the exception is by using the catch keyword, so try catch block. This just suppresses the warning for checked exceptions. There's also a way to throw your own exception. So you can say throw new and then the exception uh, name and parentheses because you're actually creating a new object. And then you can also catch that. So if we run the program, you'll see that we get null pointer exception, but we handle it. So our program doesn't crash, as you can see. So throw and throws are two different keywords, as you can see, this one suppresses the warning and this one throws a new exception. And the way you throw it is like this. We can also throw, I don't know, input or index out of bounds exception or input output exception. But yeah, then we need to handle it over here. 
A programmer can also create their own exceptions. So I, in here, I've created my own exception called tutorial. And the way you do that, you just say extends. And then if you want checked exceptions, you say exception. And if you want unchecked exception, you say runtime exception. So now this is an unchecked exception. And now this is a checked exception. And in here, you need, you need to create a constructor. And I just call this super constructor. If you need help with this and super keywords, you can find the link to my video in the description. So we just call the super constructor and we say the message. And then when I go to test in my main, I can actually throw tutorial exception and we can catch it as you can see here. And when we run the program, let me run the test you will see what we get. And as you can see here, we have hello from tutorial exception, which is basically what, what I wrote here. You can also do some other thing like system.out.println tutorial.get message or something like that. And when you run the program, again, you should see the error. And as you can see here, we get hello from the tutorial exception. And that is all on exceptions. Now you know how to handle exceptions, how to throw exceptions and how to create your own exceptions. You also know what are unchecked and checked exceptions and the difference between errors and exceptions. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something. If you did, make sure to subscribe and like the video and see you in the next tutorial. Bye.